The following is a production of Medfield TV. Welcome to Live Your Passion. I'm your host Alex Steven from Life Transforming Treasures. On Live Your Passion, our guests shared their stories and challenges and how they embraced and overcame them. Hopefully you can use some of their wisdoms to help you on your journey. I'm an author, a speaker and a life transformation coach. Please go to my website alexsteven.com and download your free copy of seven keys to your dream lifestyle. That's at alexsteven.com. Today, my guest is Katrin Cook from the Katrin Cook Show, and I'll have her introduce herself. Okay, well, thank you for having me today, yeah. Alex. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm Catherine, I'm a, I am also a coach. I work with people who are feeling stuck in their careers and looking to overcome. Um, my background is in chemical engineering and in marketing. I live in Providence and I have a show that is all about inspiring people to live their best lives. In fact, I had a great uh, guest on it recently. <laughs> Someone who came on and talked about, let me see, having a deaf son <laughs> and moving his family out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, was, I was on Katrin's show. We had a fun time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, welcome. It's nice to have you here on, on Live Your Passion. And I know we want to talk about, you know, uh, talking about Im nothing is impossible. And sometimes Absolutely. when we have challenges in life, we want to throw in the towel and say, you know, this is not possible. And you have so many stories that you could share to help people in the audience who, you know, going through challenging times to, to help them, you know, with what you went through. So if you could tell us a little bit, uh, you will start, you know, in high school, okay. how you, sw I think this was an amazing story, how you were good in one area and switch majors, you know, so tell us a little bit about how you did that and how that worked for you. Okay. Well, so when I was in high school and, you know, you do all those standardized tests and you take all the honors classes, I was really good at, at languages. So English and Spanish, by the time I was 17, I was pretty much bilingual. And so when I thought about what I was going to do, everyone said, do something with the languages. Mm. And because those were my stronger scores. I was in some of the advanced math and science classes, mm. but not doing as well as the English and the languages. But when I thought about, okay, what, when, I, when I become whatever I'm going to be when I grow up, what am I going to do with this English or Spanish degree? Right. There was nothing that actually <laughs> interested in me. <laughs> What I liked was actually getting my hands in there and doing stuff and trying stuff. Right. And that's what science is. So even though it wasn't my strong suit, that's what I decided I wanted to do. And everyone said, no, 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 what are you doing? You're crazy. Yeah. You should be doing English or language. Yeah. But it's my life. Mm -hmm. I was going to have to be the one that was going to be happy in 20 years. They weren't going to be the ones that yeah. were responsible for that. Right. So I decided I'm going into engineering. My grandpa was an engineer, I'm very proud to say. Yeah, oh, so that had to have some challenges. I mean, switching from something that came naturally to you, naturally <laughs> good, to something that you wanted to try, and you know, you had to make a switch there. How was that transition? It was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there was also a bit, uh, all right, so part of it was my own fault, too, yeah. I will admit. Yeah. So when I started off, I went to Purdue University, so I got mm. into one of the best engineering schools in the world, right. and I started taking classes, and I started failing them, because 
all of a sudden I went from being one of the smartest kids in school to being around everyone else who was also one of the smartest kids in school. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're looking at bell-shaped curves yeah. and everyone's the smartest kid, yeah. yes. You go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Those yeah. of us that didn't take advanced calculus in high yeah. school yeah. ended up down here. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, w that was challenging for you. Um, and people told you you were crazy to make that switch, but that is what you wanted to do. That is what you felt that you had to do as you looked down the road what you wanted to do in the future, mm -hmm. in your career, in your profession. So w what were some of the things um, that you had to tweak or change in order to be successful in the sciences? Well, first thing, I had to stop failing classes. <laughs> 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 they don't give you degrees if yeah. you keep failing your right. classes. Yeah. So I figured out, uh, I had to put myself aside in my own ego, and I can do this without any help, mm -hmm. and actually ask for some help. Right. So I went to the National Society of Black Engineers, which you know is a great organization. NSBE. NSBE. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, founded at Purdue University. Yeah. And they had uh, somebody come in to teach us how to study. Because yeah. being the smartest kids in high school, we didn't study all that often. Mm -hmm. And we had somebody who came in and taught us, okay, first you peruse what you're reading, and then you read what you have to read, and then you go back and you take notes on what you read. Yeah. And it was this whole long process for studying that it did not sound appealing. But I had to set my ego aside and actually try it. It took a lot longer to do each one of these steps, mm -hmm. but I actually went from being one of the worst to getting an A in some of my classes. Yeah, because you put in the effort and you ask for help. Mm -hmm. You know, and I tell people asking for help is not a sign of weakness. To me, my opinion is a sign of strength. Absolutely. When you identify where you need help and you ask for help, and people are willing to help, when you ask, so, so that's great. And you know, NSBE is a great organization. Like I told you, my mm -hmm. wife is, um, she's a NSBE, uh, she's mm -hmm. an engineer from Howard. And, um, but asking for help is pretty good. And, and NSBE does a lot for, you know, for, for engineers, I know, mm -hmm. uh, because my wife is involved with them too. So, so that's pretty good. Um, and study, and uh, you know, I tell younger kid, my kids especially, that studying, you know, we all have some ability, you know, that we're born with, uh, but studying to really be good at it is really the habit. Once you could get into a habit it, uh, of studying, and my son mastered this because being deaf, he, you know, he had to find his way. And once he got it, I mean, in middle school, that was it for him. He went all the way to his master's. Because once you have the habit and the discipline, mm -hmm. and that's, it sounds like that's what turned it around for you. That is, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. And yeah. everything else I've done in life, it, it's the same principle. Yeah, I yeah. learned how to play piano. It's not like one day mm -hmm. I just sat down and could play Mozart yeah. symphonies. Yeah. I practice again and yeah, again yeah. and again. Yeah. And you had yeah. a tutor, I assume. I had a <laughs> yeah. teacher, of course. Right, right. So, so that's the thing. Look for help. You know, get a coach, get a tutor, get a mentor. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important in our success. And then we could use that natural ability that we're born with to have inside of us. Absolutely. Yes. So you had any other mentors in school, um, in Nesby or outside of Nesby, like professors or? Anybody else that helped you through this transition? One of the things that they taught us in Nesby is go to your professor and ask. Mm -hmm. That was also a really great piece of information. I remember in my organic chemistry class, I, I, was, I was struggling again. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, like it, they say, you know what? Your professor knows everything. You need to suck them dry like a sponge. Learn right. everything that mm -hmm. they know. Ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And so I became best of friends with my uh, TA. He could not get me out of his office. Yeah. The teaching assistant yeah, yeah. to help me with learning how to do the homework, how to do the test, um, you know, ask the question a million times if I have to mm -hmm. until I really got it. It's you're right, asking for help does take a lot of strength because mm -hmm. you have to put aside your ego mm -hmm. and to continue to ask and say, I have no idea.
Yeah. But between him and then also some of the older students in Nesby, you know, as freshmen, some of the seniors, sophomores, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's really how I got the room. Yeah, and, th and that's what you had to do. You had to go out there, you had to knock on doors. And I did the same thing in school. And my <laughs> professors at Howard used to say, you're so persistent because I'll go to them for one point or two points. And mm -hmm. I say, look at it again. This is what you taught me. And they look at it and they give me my points. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a big difference between an A and a B in my books. <laughs> yeah. I didn't settle. I went, and you have to do that. You have to be persistent. Not a pain, but you know, you had to know when to go and ask, and you don't want to be a pain and you know, wasting people's time. I want to make that clear, but you had to know, do your part, and when you need help, go and, and get help. So you graduated mm -hmm. from Purdue, you did, did, did. well at <laughs> great I school. Did. There were only two schools at Purdue that had uh, GPA caps, mm -hmm. uh, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and chemical engineering had the higher one. I got into the School of Chemical Engineering and graduated. <laughs> so congrats, congrats. Thank you. So I, I know from school now, you, then you had another challenge. Mm -hmm. And you, you started working, you were in the workforce. So tell us a little bit about that, how you went from Purdue to Georgia it was? It was Georgia. So you could tell us. So uh, Georgia is very different from New England. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went to, I love working, like I said, I like working with my hands. I like getting in there and figuring things out. So I wanted to go to a chemical plant. And they generally don't put chemical plants in the middle of New York City. Right. So, because, you know, that would kind of, kind of be a disaster. <laughs> So I was out in remote Georgia, a um, place where, that's so small that people from Georgia don't even know where it is. Wow. Yeah, there was one stop, one stop light, and then the neighboring town had one stop sign. Wow. <laughs> um, and it big was, difference from the big city. Yeah, huge yeah, difference. Yeah. I mean, okay, I'm originally from Ohio, so yeah. not that big of a city, yeah, but still. Still, yeah. Um, still more than one stop light and stop sign. <laughs> But everyone was super nice to me, um, but I did learn very quickly that there was a reality shift. There were people that expected me to be at 20-something years old, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Not an engineer. Not an engineer, yeah. not someone in charge, not someone, yeah. you know, making shots and making calls. Yeah. Um, so I did learn that, you know, being especially one of the only, I think I was the only Female. I was the only female um, in a position with a bachelor's degree in the plant I was in. Wow. And having to work with these guys, um, sometimes they didn't like it. And they even had a practice for a while, you won't believe this. They would, if they didn't want to include me, they'd go into the men's bathroom and that's where they'd have their meetings. Wow. And then they'd come out of the bathroom with whatever decision and I was supposed to follow it. And how, how, you, how you handle that? I went into the men's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only had to do it once, yeah. and they were like, what are you doing in yeah. here? And I was like, well, I came if, to the meeting. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to meet about this, this is important to me too. Mm. Um, you want to have in the men's bathroom? I'm going to join you in the men's bathroom. So from then on, they had it in somebody's office. Yeah. Yeah. So the challenge mm. there was, I'm here, and as you went to a remote place, so it was like a culture shock. Mm -hmm. You're still in the United States, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, a smaller place. But then it didn't sound like the workplace was welcoming for you. And coming from straight from university to that, it, it's tough. Um, and then, you know, the, the male engineers didn't want to include you. Being a young, mm -hmm. young female and minority had to be challenging for you. And I hear you saying that you, you took it head on. Oh, yeah. You took it head on. You go in the men's room, I'll come in the men's room. And they got the message that you're really interested, you want to be part of the team. So you, you did things. You didn't just sit back and, you know, take it. You, you did things. You were proactive, so to speak. I mean, I'm not saying initially I wasn't, you know, cr curling up in a little yeah, ball. Like, yeah. why is this happening to yeah. me? Yeah. But after a while, I had to find some courage in myself somewhere yeah. to say, this is, I'm not, this is not going to be acceptable to me. Mm -hmm. And this is the solution. You know what? I knew, that they, I knew that there was nothing to see. I knew they were buttoned up. The door yeah. was most. So I decided to go in. Yeah, that's good. And I'm sure they respected you for that. 
um, at the end of the day, they had mm -hmm. to say, you know what, <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can continue this practice. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And that's, you know, um, for young women in the, who's listening to this in the audience, mm -hmm. you know, minorities, you know, you, ha you have to take action. You can't just sit back and feel sorry for yourself, at least not for long. And speak up. you got to speak up and try to be part of the team as much as you could. Not, not everywhere you go, you will be accepted right away. Absolutely. So, yeah, so you, you have to take some action. And, and the thing is, you know, as you said that and I'm thinking here, you paved the way. You probably don't know this after you left. But you paved the way for the, another, the other young woman that might walk through that door to work there the other minority, male or female, that might walk through there. Because these men, their perspective shift, mm -hmm. shifted uh, without you even, you know, probably thinking about it when you left there. But, but you, you, you pierced that corporate veil, so to speak, you know. So, um, so that, that's a good thing. I hope you know? so. Yeah, sometimes we pioneers and, you know, places we go. But we, we had to think about, you know, what we've done for the, the other minority or, or woman that's coming after us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're gonna, it's gonna be a little easier for them. May not be that easy, but you know, you've done something good in terms of speaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I yeah. hope so. Yeah, so, um, so in the workplace, they started to have the meetings mm -hmm. in, in, the, um, in an office, regular office. And so what were some of the things you do to advance your career there, you talking to people, trying to get help? How did that work as a young engineer coming out from school, you know, now getting experience in the workforce? Well, one of the things that I also learned that was really helpful to me was staying humble right. and working with the operators, the people that aren't, they're not the people in charge of, mm. let's say, the business, mm. but they know, they know what's going on in the plant because they're in there every single day. So one of the biggest pieces of advice I have for people that are starting off in their career, get to know everyone in your office, mm -hmm. from the CEO to the janitor, because you never know. Do not dismiss the janitors yeah. or anyone like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. because they know a lot more than you think. Yeah, and, and the, you know, one word I hear, heard you use there is, you know, being humble. And that goes a long way, you know, showing respect to people, no matter what position they have on the corporate ladder. Um, it makes things easier for you. You don't know what they'll do, they'll, you know, for you to help you, uh, you know, as you work there, mm -hmm. things they might hear, things they might, um, you know, do to help you to, to get along. So it's just, I mean, and being respectful and manly to people doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. You know, smiling with people being, um, you know, being nice to them, so to speak, doesn't really cost you anything, but it could be a lot beneficial in yeah. the long run. So that's good. And you had like any mentors or any anyone that um, took you under their wings mm -hmm. in there after? Yeah, one? I will never forget George. Mm -hmm. um, I had my manager actually said to me, um, I can't hate you because you're a woman. I can't hate you because you're black. So I'm gonna hate you because you're from the north. <laughs> um, so after I picked my face up off the floor yeah. and and got my tail from between my legs, yeah. I I went to George. George had been he's he was an older man, yeah. so nice to me. Um, he was just a really good person, and I told him what happened. Mm -hmm. And he was a senior engineer, so he wasn't my direct manager, mm -hmm. but I started to get more projects through him. Mm -hmm. So that way, he gave me more of an opportunity to show what I can do, for me to learn and focus on what do I know, what can I bring to the table, and what are my skill sets versus having to deal with, I'm going to hate you because you're from the north. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that in my job situations, anytime I've had a problem, looking around to find somebody that could act as an ally has always helped. Yeah. And I will never forget him because of that. Yeah. Build that bridge for you and you, you feel a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And w when, when we get that level of comfort, we perform better. Mm -hmm. You know, we at ease. And it's good for the company and for the employee, I must say. But, uh, you know, that's good. And um, 
you know, in, in my own experience, I didn't know the word mentor growing up, but I knew how to ask for help. And I got that from my mom. Mm -hmm. She would say, well, why you don't ask, you know, somebody who already went through this experience? And uh, one of my, you know, I had um, classmates will tell me, well, oh, this one will say no. Or that. I say, look, it's 50-50. They either say yes or mm -hmm. no. So what I have to lose? Mm -hmm. If I sit here and don't ask, it's 100% no. So I'll go for 50-50 and um, you know, I started to do that even in sports and my school work and anything I wanted, I'll look, I'll try, like what you did, not people directly related to me in the job or in my school, I went to people who went to different schools, who took um, different career paths, you know, in Trinidad it's a lot industrialized, so a lot of um, People will leave before they graduate high school to go to the apprenticeship program in an oil company, okay. like Texaco. So, and I, I ask people about that, you know, and for me, I thought that was a dead end. You know, at first you think, well, you get these skills, but then you do that for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to university where, you know, I have this base of knowledge and contacts and network where I could work anywhere in the world change companies, change careers, and you know, my friends were like, that, that's crazy, just get my, even my dad, get a job, work for Texaco for 40 years, get a pension, get a piece of land, build a house, get married, have some kids, and I was like, that's too basic for me. I mean, I did those things, but I wasn't um, stuck by it, you know, I had my choices. And I think that's what we want people to hear is that you want to have your choices open, mm -hmm. like what you did from languages to science. You went to work in Georgia, and you know it wasn't like the welcome red carpet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you had to work with what you have. Yeah. You have to d play the cards that life deal you. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, you know, what it is. Um, any other stories, or you know, any things you want to share with us? with your experience? Well, with I would say actually one, um, one other area I learned in the workforce was once I moved from engineering into marketing, that's where I learned a lot of things about right. dealing with the things you were supposed to learn in high school. Yeah. <laughs> bullying. Yeah. Workforce bullying is very real. Yeah. And I didn't learn that until I got into marketing and how to deal with bullies and how to deal with mean girls and that whole situation. Very competitive. Very competitive. Yeah. Um, like an engineer, I took a, I made a design of experiments. Everyone says there are a couple ways you go about it. You can ignore them. You can be super nice. You can mm -hmm. stand up to them, mm -hmm. or you can stand up to them, you know, covertly, like going through HR. Yeah. Uh, there was a story where I worked with a man, who he was my manager, and he was known to be a bully. He actually has bullied other people out of the company. Mm. And one day he got mad at me and he's yelling F Catherine through the hallway. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was a proud day of my life when he's yelling, yelling F Catherine. <laughs> yeah. So how you handled that? So again, once I picked my face up off the floor, yeah. um, I thought about it and realized, you know what? I was also letting him get in my head. So I was making mistakes that I normally wouldn't yeah, have. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's one of the biggest things I learned about bullies is in the workplace, not letting them get in your head to the point where you're starting to make mistakes because of them. Mm -hmm. And that's where meditation and things like that come in mm -hmm. to stay calm, stay centered, know what you know, know what you don't know, and move forward. What I decided was um, I had, I'd been super nice. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I tried ignoring him. It wasn't working. Yeah. Um, so finally, I stood up for myself. Yeah. Uh, I started off by standing up for myself to his face, and then I, uh, I went to HR and stood up for myself, which in that situation was an even bigger stand because now it was on the record. Yeah. And the bullying had to stop. You may not like me, but you know what? You're going to at least pretend to respect me, yeah. or at least be, cr be civil. Be civil. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't have to like me, but be mm -hmm. civil. And the thing here is, you know, you had to stand up, you had to take some action. Mm -hmm. And you tried different things, and your last resort was going to HR because you had to protect your sanity at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, my wife, as you know, is an engineer, and I'm, I come in from corporate, being in more the sales relationship manager. She can understand the politics and the bullying and the backbiting and the competition, but it's a different world than engineering, where mm -hmm. engineers come and they create and they're nice to everybody. Right. Um, you know, when you have a quota and everybody want to get, get ahead, you know, it's, it, it's very competitive and how you manage in that environment. So you had to find ways to survive and, you know, be civil mm -hmm. and be, be nice to people, but make sure people don't take advantage of you. Right. And, you know, that's a good point. I want young people especially to hear that when you come out of school, people people going to try to force things on you, to bully you. Um, and to a point, you had to say, okay, I'm taking this stance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, if things doesn't change, you know, you had to take whatever is necessary steps um, to protect yourself mm. at the end of the day. Um, because I know people who leave jobs because of that. Mm -hmm. They rather leave than, you know, stand up to it. So you had to make the choice. Sometimes you might have to leave. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, those are last resorts. And it, it does depend situation to situation. I yeah. worked with one woman who decided she didn't like me. Um, but if I ask her... You know, what did I do? Can I, can I change the situation? Did I offend you in some way? Mm. She'd be like, no, 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 everything's fine, everything's fine. But then I'd hear that she'd talk about me like a dog behind my back. <laughs> yeah. I eventually learned she said it was because I, because I stand up too straight um, and my <laughs> posture's too, too straight. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was, that was yeah. all on her. Well, yeah, that's not you at all. That's... You know, that's her, like you say. And you had, you had to realize that, that it, it's not you. Nothing's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You might have some things wrong with you that you have to tweak. And you mm -hmm. did ask her, well, you know, and she didn't come up with anything. So if she have that perception of you, it's, it's her. It's her upbringing. It's her experience. Mm -hmm. And you had to know how to work through those things in the workplace. And just be super nice. And just be, treat her with profession. Be mm -hmm. courteous, professional. Don't stoop to her level. Because everyone else is going to see that no matter what her problem is with me, nobody else seems to have a problem because I'm, I'm generally courteous, nice, professional. No one's seen some yeah. massive issue. So you shared with us your challenges in school, in the workplace. Um, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit what you're doing now. You're this big coach <laughs> 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 trying to help people mm -hmm. who've been through you know, who going through what you've been through. So tell us a little bit now what you're doing, how you're giving back, um, the new Katrin Cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been through a number of transitions. I went mm -hmm. from engineering into marketing, mm -hmm. and now I have my coaching business, and I'm helping people to not, to, I'm helping people avoid landmines. Right. I'm working with people who are trying to figure out what are they trying to be when they grow up. Um, because I've been there and gone through making my decisions for what I want to do. I'm more able to help guide people as they try to figure out what they want to be. And then I'm also working with people that are trying to make their own transitions. Maybe they know, I want to be a, I want to be a CPA. Okay, well then let's work through the steps for being a CPA. Mm -hmm. uh, with my engineering background, I tend to be very logical and mm -hmm. linear yeah. and let's get this done, right. um, which tends to help people. And then I think I'm very personable. <laughs> yeah. People generally like me. Um, so then I help, you know, make them feel comfortable and I like people to feel confident. That's one of, the, I, mm -hmm. I believe in confident career yeah. transition mm -hmm. transformations. Yeah. So that's what you're doing now, helping mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. um, to go through. And, and that's great, you know, the experiences you went through and you could help them with those stories, your experiences. And then as you said, coming from engineering, being linear, logical, helps people. People want structure. Mm -hmm. They want somebody to hold their hand, to have, you know, hold them accountable and ask them the right questions and, you know, set out a plan. People, uh, we all need that. Mm -hmm. I mean, coaches need coaches, you know, trainers need tra train the trainer. <laughs> Absolutely. So we, o we all need that um, all the time because I have mentors, I have coaches, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else you want to um, leave with the audience? Any nuggets you want to share with them from your experience that could help them in their journey? 
Well, all right, so one of the things I've learned in life is nothing is impossible. There have been so many times where I, where someone said, you know what, you can't do this, you shouldn't do this, even though that's what I wanted to do. And anytime I've buckled down, I've done research, I've always surprised myself. Finding some strength in a place that I didn't think existed and, and overcame and tried and did, and sometimes I failed, fell flat on my face, yeah. but you know what? I learned every single time that I failed. There is nothing in this life that if you really want to do it, you can't do. Yeah, find a way, find the people. So, mm -hmm. so that's great, um, you know, and I really enjoy your story and sharing, you know, the challenges you had, how you overcame them, and where you are now. It's, it's pre pretty interesting. I help, <coughs> excuse me, help a lot of young people, minorities, women. Um, so it's pretty good that you could share with us. And, um, Thanks a lot for gracing us with your presence in our show. <laughs> Thank um, you so yeah, much. Yeah, and one of the things I like to do is um, present my guests with one of my books, Courage in Our Hearts, or Forward is by Les Brown, my mentor, coach, and friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is your autograph copy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, one of the things I like to do in closing the show is um, read the quote of the day, whatever today is. Um, forget what date. <laughs> and, and see, yeah. And today's quote is, excellence always sells, Earl Nightingale. And I think, you know, how you handled your school transition and work and everything, was, you know, you really excelled. You find ways to, um, to get it done. And um, Courage in Our Hearts, mm -hmm. uh, Inspirational Life Quotes. I just read the quote and our other books are all on Amazon. And um, what, how, if people want to reach you, how could they reach you? Um, try www.kadinacoaching, K-A-D-I-N-A, coaching.com. And then on Facebook, The Catherine Cook Show, and which is also on, um, well, Look it on Facebook, and then also the shows are available on YouTube on The Catherine Cook Show. Yeah, so, yeah, great. And um, you could also contact me through my website, alexsteven.com, or info at alexsteven.com. Thanks a lot for um, joining us today, and see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>